Hi, um, and thank you very much for joining us. This is the Orlando Sentinel's editorial board interview with Craig Russell, who is one of the three candidates in seat two um, to replace um, C Sheila DeCicio, who is running for mayor. And um, he is a coach for football and wrestling at Winter Park High School. Mr. Russell, and he, um, this is his first time seeking public office. So we're going to be spending a little time talking to him about his ideas and plans for the city. And, um, and then we will let him make a closing statement. Can you define what smart growth means to you? Smart growth was adopted um, a couple of years ago um, across the country in ways to um, enhance and evolve uh, or not involve, evolve cities and municipalities where, um, you know, they maximize mixed land uses. Uh, they take advantage of, take advantage of different compact designs, create multiple ranges of housing opportunities and choices for multiple income levels, you know, creating walkable neighborhoods. It speaks to how the next generation would like to live. You know, the live, work, play sort of mantra that, is in some of the more modern cities. Now, at Winter Park, we face the challenges of a you know severely dense population and compact design. We're landlocked. Um, so some of the ideas don't fit, but I think that we have experts and we have young people and we have um, people that have moved away and come back in neighboring counties that would work with us and find ways to um, make it more attainable for people to live here, make our, our streets better, our sidewalks. And I grew up in this neighborhood, in this city, and for the past 30 years, I've hit the same potholes and the same brick roads and the same infrastructure, same sidewalks, uh, and, you know, randomly the same. So it's, and I know that's a little thing, but the families I speak for that don't have a voice would like to see these small creature comforts that directly affect their day-to-day -day addressed. And um, it's a big plan in regards to, it's a big idea, big ideology, but I think that our city um, would like to move in that direction. You know, the families that I speak on or speak for are, are wide range of younger families. And um, that's kind of where we're going. So to follow up on that, um, one of the more controversial uh, issues in the past several years in Winter Park has been the Orange uh, Avenue overlay district. Are you satisfied with uh, how that turned out? Are you, would you want to revisit that at all? Or are you uh, comfortable with, with um, the way it is now, which is uh, redevelopment that is, is mixed use? Uh, personally, I think it was just irresponsible. Uh, I mean, to to have something, a plan that had taxpayers' money involved, that had um, city money involved, it had, uh, there's a lot of money that was involved and planning and people's time. And it went from the city commission, it went to the state, it was approved seven ways to Sunday. And all of a sudden, then it wasn't just because it seemed like the wind blowed a certain way and that commission at the time didn't want to go through with it. And I think that's irresponsible. I'd like to not see that happen again. Uh, I don't want to start over from scratch because that would waste a lot of people's money all over again. But from my own knowledge, I, I want to research um, where it was and what fell through. I want to hear about what the commission didn't like after the fact and what they did like in the beginning. So the, the research in itself, that place, I think it does have opportunity for development. I think it has opportunity to get cleaned up and any opportunity that would bring revenue into the city that would clean up and enhance the existing culture and heritage and infrastructure, we have to, we, we have to speak on and we have to, you know, address it. You mentioned one of the issues that people have extremely strong opinions of. Um, is it time for Winter Park to give up the idea of brick streets? Is it? Oh God, no! This is Winter Park. That's what we. It's that's <laughs> that's part of our history and heritage and our culture. Um, there's 28 miles worth, 23, 23, 28 miles of brick roads. Um, I think they need some TLC. I think uh, there needs to be a plan in place that um, 
has maintenance, but you know, there's things in this city in really any city, in my opinion, that you have to enhance and you have to, um, what's the word? That's a part of our culture. It's a part of the city's history and, and heritage. And whereas, um, you know, there's two types of brick streets. So they just, they need some TLC. They need to be addressed and taken care of. So that way they're not a point of contention that, you know, that stinks, that, that people don't like. It's, you know, it's, they've been around for a long time. And I do know a lot of people hate them. I mean, this, my students, when I was in school, riding the buses, you knew as soon as you hit the certain brick roads and brick streets that you had to hang on because it was going to be a roller coaster ride. And that hasn't changed. That's the issue I have. The brick roads themselves and the and the the beauty of them is one thing, but the fact that they don't get taken care of, that's a whole other ball of wax. Another one of the issues that takes place partly on this brick street is the fact that traffic in Winter Park has always been an issue. And many of the residents say that that the um that the gridlock is becoming a real barrier to the city's forward growth. Um, some of the busiest thoroughfares are out of the city's control, but what can the city do to, to ease the gridlock, get, get traffic moving, and, um, and make Winter Park a more easily navigable city? One of, the main, one of the main arteries, as we know, is a state road that that the Florida Department of Transportation controls. So that's that's a tough, um, a tough thing to deal with in regards to F. Dot wants to move cars through as many as possible. There's like forty thousand or four hundred thousand cars that come through Winter Park or cut through town, and it, it to you know as leadership we have to be able to to not only fight, you know, cities or other interests, developer, developer interests, or, um, you know, other, other entities that use Winter Park for whatever reason, this reason being a cut through, we have to make sure that our residents are heard, our residents are acknowledged, and what's best for them is what's put to the forefront. For instance, SunRail. SunRail is, um, a, a, a wonderful addition that I believe is a um, is beneficial to Winter Park, you know, uh, not necessarily on our dime because the best thing about SunRail is that it stops in Winter Park. Um, so, it again, it takes, I think that the leadership hasn't reached out or found creative ways to speak with other entities. The answer has just been no. You know, the answer is no, we're not going to do this traffic study for here. No, we're not going to pay for it. No, the answer is no. And, and I'm more about listening to, listening to see what Sunrise offer, listening to see what F dot, what, how we can work with the Florida Department of Transportation and see Orlando to make roads safer, get cars through here that aren't supposed to be here, find places for people to park. You know, if you look at the past, what, half dozen or two dozen other um elections every single candidate has spoken on how they're going to address the infrastructure and parking but yet the infrastructure and parking is still the same so i, I guess it's my turn to, to really see I, I i think it's more about collaborating with the entities around us to have less of a cut be less of a cut through so one of the um uh more visible pieces of land in winter park is where the old library was and it, uh, it's on city land and it's uh, kind of in limbo right now. What what do you think should happen with that? Should it be sold? Should it be? Should the city do something with it? What what is the, your? Well, I, I think we should take care of it. I think we should you know we should invest away and take care of it. And we got to hurry up and come up with an idea about what we're going to do with it. That that's been a that was one of the first gems of the city. Growing up, I I loved going to that library. It's kind of a gateway to downtown. Um, it's an opportunity for the city to have a piece of history uh, uplifted and it, a number of things can be done with that. There have been two RFPs already that have gone through there and they were, they were denied. Um, uh, I'm not necessarily interested in selling it off rip because 
it's it's a special piece of land, especially for property. It's not it's not only valuable, you know, monetarily, but it has a lot of history behind it. I'd like to see what we what what we can make it that our residents can get the best out of it, and not just selling it. One of the things that is always an issue with municipal government is budgets, and Winter Park surprisingly has has built considerable reserves while maintaining one of the mid-range to lower actually property tax rates in Orange County. Um, do you think that was a good decision? Should the city have funded more infrastructure instead of banking that money? Sit. Should we have... I'm sorry, you repeat the question again. Yeah. Should you have um, either lowered the property tax rate or spent some of that money that's now in reserves there, instead, of, instead of stockpiling it. Right, right. So sitting on it, use it for something for the betterment of the city and residents. Um, I, it's That's what I'm all for. I'm all for listening to the residents and seeing what they want to do with their own money. Um, if we have an opportunity, our reserves are big. I know we've dipped into our reserves the past couple of years um, for some pet projects across the city, which um, I didn't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily agree with. I think um, we should be enhancing things we currently have. Um, we should be looking for opportunities to uh, grow mindfully and uh, and smart, fix the things that we currently have. That's where, that's where I think our focus should be if we have the opportunity to do it. I have a more basic question for you, Mr. Russell. What uh, what motivated you to um, to run? I was. It, it's kind of it was on my my path and my calling already. It's. I feel like as though in, in this town, when you live in Winter Park, you you kind of uh, me living in Winter Park. It's it's what I already do. Uh, I'm a I'm a teacher. I'm not a lawyer. I'm a I'm a coach. I'm not an engineer. Um, I speak for those who can't speak for themselves. I've advocated for families within Orange County Public Schools as an educator from the full spectrum of this community. And that's what I have a passion for. I feel as though I, the leadership that I've honed by working on boards for the city, Parks and Rec and the library, working on boards um, at the high school, working in leadership uh, in education and starting my nonprofit organization all of those things have led me to positioning myself to become an even bigger leader in the city. Um, it's it's an opportunity to help more people, I think. I think on a grander scale. Uh, currently, um, my foundation services, you know, a couple hundred families, and I'm an educator to a couple hundred more. So uh, if this allows me, this will allow me to reach even more families in this community, uh, the full spectrum of it. Because I want to speak for everybody, not just a small percentage of this, this community. Thanks for that answer. One more, one more question in here. Um, are you satisfied with the performance of the city manager? Of the city manager? Yes, I am. I think uh, our city manager is, is, is fantastic. The city manager position is a thankless, um scapegoat and it, it's whereas he, he j and what he does is is that he empowers and uplifts uh the city staff you know the staff and the ins and outs of the employees that run city hall do it with such grace and intelligence and he's their leader that that gets the best out of it you know i, I think he's done a phenomenal job in his term as city manager i, I think that it's the but what speaks on that is the times I walk through City Hall and seeing who's in there working, it, it's that, that's because of him and his team. So I, I commend my hats off to him in that regard. Um, so, yeah, I think he's done a great job. Well, thank you so much. It seems like it went really fast, but we are actually to the to the point where we usually wrap these up. So um, just let me remind people that early voting is going on right now on this race. And um, the uh, election day is March 19th, the same day as the presidential preference primary. Um, 
we do urge people, we will be making a recommendation in this race, but we urge people to do their own research, take a look at the other two candidates in the, in the race. Um, that would be Jason Johnson and Stockton Reeves. And, um, and make sure you come out and vote, because if you don't do that, then you don't really have a basis to complain. And with that, Mr. Russell, we'd like to ask you um, if you can, there you go, um, to make a, a brief about two minute closing statement. When we get to that time, I will hold up my handy little card and um, actually I'll give you about 30 minutes warning so you can wrap it up. 30 seconds warning so you can wrap it up. Um, but uh, so tell us why you would be the right person in this three person race. I believe I would be, I am the right candidate for this race because of my guiding principles. Um, my guiding principles I have include uh, my proven leadership. I've been a proven leader in education, um, starting a nonprofit, advocating for families through the full spectrum of this community for over 20 years now. Um, my representation speaks to all of those families that I've spoken on experiences. I'm, like I said, a teacher, uh, a coach. I have, I've been a, I'm a father. I have a blended family of five. Um, so I have similar experiences as a large number of the people in this community and the families. And growing up here, I take a lot of pride in knowing all four corners of this community and their wants and needs. Um, and the ability to community build is something that I take pride in that I've done over the years through my nonprofit organization and just the way I carry myself um, uh, with, with the families that I serve. Whenever there's a need that presents itself, I have figured out a way to bring people that are capable and willing to give back to the people that I'm advocating for and speaking for. It brings the community together when you share experiences and you expose people to different ways of life. And, and, and we found, my wife and I found such joy and such positive response from this community to give and help, help out their fellow residents. So I hope to continue to do that on the city commission at a higher level. Um, again, um, I, I believe I'm the best candidate because I'm here to listen and I'm here to serve. Uh, I'm service minded and I, I love my town. So I'd be honored for anybody's vote here in this community. I am no more beholden to developers or bank presidents than I am to the nurses and, and teachers and, and first responders of this city. I don't have any puppet strings behind me. Nobody speaks for me. Nobody pays my bills. I listen to the people and I'm here to speak for the residents and that's it. Um, and I hope to do that as a city commissioner. Um, I'd be honored to have anybody's vote. Thank, Thank you so much. And we, we wish you the best of luck.